Anyway, I'm glad that we were able to reorganize this so quickly because it would, I felt like it was a nice introduction yesterday. Yes. Um, but Definitely. it would also, I, I did want to also still share with um, people who are watching some um, background about what you do and the ways in which we have collaborated and are collaborating again now. Um, so I do feel like I kind of want to go back to where we were yesterday and maybe ask you to share with us how you started making these beautiful tuners that you are now famous for. Um, the sort of backstory sure. of, of that. Sure. Uh, so about nine years ago, um, I was at a, a casual chamber concert and a chamber quartet concert and, um, a mutual friend who is a violinist at the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra, Catherine Fong, came up to me afterwards and asked me if I could eat, bring out her E-string tuner. And um, I got very excited and I said, sure, I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I find out what that is. <laughs> so I found out <laughs> that it was a piece of metal uh, that is on the violin uh, or actually viola as well and as well as cello and i went back to my sketchbook and started sketching taking what i know to be best-selling motifs in the jewelry world uh, since that's my background as a jeweler and a jewelry designer so i decided on the pave ball and a mesh bow with a, a pave center and Catherine Fong, she's, is a very stylist violinist. She, uh, he's all, she's always put together very well. And um, I wanted to impress her. <laughs> and um, so she selected the pave ball tuner and she really liked it. And a little while later, after purchasing it, she came up to, she approached me and asked if I would want to go into business with her saying that this, there could be something there. So we did. And so, uh, because she's a violinist, she started rocking it on her violin basically. And through word of mouth organically, it started to spread her colleagues and acquaintances and then, uh, musicians. She did, she was doing, um, things for outside of the orchestra. Um, people got to hear about it and know about it. So, that's how we grew and uh, fast forward to today. Um, I still make jewelry and I make jewelry for the human body and I make jewelry for musical instruments, <laughs> string instruments. Right. Are you two, are you still working together? Uh, we are not professionally working together. She, uh, yeah. she stepped away uh, a few years ago after this birth arrival of her second child. Uh, so, right. It's on a consultancy basis, but no, it's just me now. <laughs> right. She's the musician oh. too. <laughs> well, I suppose now that you know what you're doing um, and you have an idea yes. of what kinds of things musicians would like at this point too. Um, I also wanted to ask about um, how many of your, I don't know if you want to divide it into a percentage, but you know, are, are most of the things that you make for people bought directly from your website from the selection that's there? Or how often does it happen that people approach you um, and say, can you make a custom tuner for me? And this is what I want it to look like or do whatever you want, but I want it to be a one of a kind or um, mm -hmm. what, what's the sort of breakdown? Um, I'd say, you know, it's, uh, it's becoming more like 70% uh, of um, musicians buying uh, from my collection and 30% um, uh, which are custom requests, one of a kind pieces. And they right. could be anywhere from um, existing s designs uh, that they want in a different color combination or something that's completely different, uh, completely new. Right. So yes, that, and the, the custom is growing. <laughs> do people ever approach you with their own, you know, here was my mother's wedding ring, or, you know, do, do people ever approach you with their own materials? Yes, that's actually how it started. Um, I was getting a few of those, but um, 
it really started, I think that started when people started seeing that I was a jewelry designer and they started kind of seeing what I was doing in my jewelry uh, business. And um, right. actually the beginning of the pandemic, a Canadian violinist approached me and asked if I could create a violin tuner using a bracelet that belonged to her beloved mo uh, late mother. And uh, so she sent me the bracelet <laughs> um, and I melted the gold from the bracelet and there were emerald stones in the bracelet. So I melted wow. the gold and used the emeralds to create a um, three stone uh, design tuner, which she also possibly wanted for a pendant down the road. Uh, so, cause right. the designs are interchangeable between jewelry as well as um, tuners. So that was that. And then another violinist uh, sent me wedding bands that belonged to his wife and himself. Um, and actually right. other pieces like gold uh, fillings. Um, and I made a tuner using that uh, with an opal stone. And so, yes, right. so they definitely said, and it's actually very nice. It's very sentimental because uh, gold lasts forever, as we all know. And so it's right. something that... Yeah. It, with the sentimental meaning behind it, it's special. <laughs> right. That's fascinating, actually, turning these things into proper sort of keeper items that have sentimental value associated with them. It's really quite cool, actually. Um, as some people might know, we did a collaboration with you last year when we introduced our style mm -hmm. icon series, Shoulder Rest. We had the three designs, and we did a giveaway with um, Tiffany Moore. Um, and of, of a Kuhn um, style icon rest with one of your tuners. So, um, but now, mm -hmm. of course, we're doing a new collaboration, which I think that we've already talked about on Instagram, um, which is our 50th anniversary tuner. Have you got it there? Yes. Great. I think, I think Aaron has already put it up on Instagram. So people might have already yes. seen it. And, um, and, it, it looks amazing. I, we haven't seen them in real life yet. I think they're waiting to greet us in, in Atlanta. Um, when we arrive at yes, the Astro Show, are. some have been sent there. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it in real life. Can you just describe a little bit about how that thing is actually made? Sure. So this is made of brass, and uh, it's made kind of like a cufflink. So uh, in that the brass casting is... Uh, a stone setting. It has a seat with the words Kuhn um, as part of the model. And then the negative space is filled with black enamel. So the brass casting is soldered first into the existing Whitner Hill style tuner that exists on its own. And then I, we solder the casting on top of it. And then it's, play, it's finished by jewelers and then polished, and then after that, uh, we do the in the enamel, and then after that, it's engraved with the little logo, um, and then and then we assemble it this way. Right, they're very very pretty. I must say, I'm really looking forward to seeing one on an instrument as well. Um, I think we're going to do yes, a giveaway of one of them at the after show, um, and but they are they were specially produced for our 50th anniversary, and of course we'll be giving them away. We'll I think we're doing some giveaways over the course of the year, as well as um, I think our coon featured artists who are really supportive of what we do and our product um, will each be getting one and so on. So um, they will be really commemorative, as you know. We had quite a small number made. Um, so people will be lucky to get them, dare I say. I don't mean to sound arrogant about it, but there really aren't very many of them. And they're super valuable. So I'm really excited by our latest collaboration. I think that, I, as I said to you yesterday, one of the reasons that Aaron has been so intrigued by your work is because of this idea of taking you know, an, a workaday, ordinary object that, that violinists need um, you know, for a practical reason and making it into something really beautiful. Um, that you actually want to look at um, rather than just something that's kind of got to be there. Um, so I think it's really a great thing to be doing, actually, because, um, I mean, it's a great thing to even think about, actually. Um, so, and, you know, we're, we're, we're at Coon with our style icons. Every once in a while, we try to push the boat out and do something that's just fun and looks nice. 
Um, and that's what those are. I mean, there are Bravo shoulder rests, so there's still good shoulder rests, but still the main idea of it is to make a really pretty um, kind of snazzy um, shoulder rest, um, but which is, of course, a functional item. So um, it feels like yes. a good fit, actually, our work together. Very, very good fit. <laughs> so much fun to work with as well as, uh, yeah, I mean, you have so much history. Uh, 50th anniversary, that's a huge milestone. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. so, yes, I definitely think so. I'm so excited. So glad that we it does uh, feel like collaborated. A huge milestone. Me too. Um, it's, it, it, it feels weird to say that it's our 50th anniversary this year. I mean, I remember growing up, you know, when Joseph, in the, well, in the very early days of the Kuhn shoulder rest, Joseph would get his emigre friends from Czechoslovakia and Hungary to come around and have a bucket of KFC and some beer. And in exchange, they would assemble these machine shoulder rests, right, by the dozen. Um, so we really have come, well, it's true, That's, those are my earliest memories of Kuhn. Um, and so we really have quite, come quite a long way. Um, and having said that, you know, it was quite accidental that I realized that the 4th of January of this year was our 50th anniversary. I was looking for something. I was doing some research, and I came across the original patent, and I spotted that date on it, and I thought, wow, next wow. year is our 50th anniversary. <laughs> it's on the 4th of January that that first patent was issued. Um, so, yeah, it's, oh it is God. a big milestone for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the highlights of our year, and who knows, maybe your um, your uh, tuner will feature in the concert as well. We're having a concert. Our probably the big event of the year for us is going to be this concert during Chamberfest in Ottawa, um, featuring a few of uh, Coon featured artists um, with a repertoire that we have collaborated um, with Chamberfest on choosing um, that reflects things about our family and our company and so on. Um, and um, so that's our big concert. That's our big event for our 50th. But it would be great if one of the violinists, at least, um, could have one of these tuners on their instrument. Um, so it could become a little feature um, of the entire year. Yes. Uh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it will be. We'll make sure that happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, and of that course, now I'm already great. thinking ahead about what we're going to do next. Um, with you, um, <laughs> some other reason to de to devise a really beautiful tuner, um, but we shall have to see about that. Yes, um, there's uh, so many things. What's that? <laughs> so, uh, oh, I said there's so many uh, opportunities to explore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so absolutely. Uh, very, absolutely. I'm very excited about this concert. I wish I was there to see it in person. <laughs> Maybe I will visit. I'm really excited too. <laughs> I'm really excited too. Well, one of the great things about it is that we are collaborating with um, Violin Channel on it as well. And hopefully we'll be able to live stream it and stream it for a while afterwards because obviously it's during Chamber Fest in Ottawa and it will, I'm sure, have a big audience there. Um, but, you know, it is a one-off concert and we're a company that sells our products all over the world. So people will be able to watch mm -hmm. the concert after the fact and help celebrate our 50th with, with us and also just listening, li listen to some lovely, interesting music. Um, so it will be, and we're going to have a party afterwards, needless to say, assuming the COVID rules allow Good. at that point. Um, yeah. Yes, I hope so. so. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it will be exciting. And Aaron and I will be flying to Canada for that concert. Um, so oh, yeah, wonderful. that's a big event for us this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, well, my know, God. Well, really yeah, yeah. It was really great to finally meet you after, after hearing so much about you for such a long time. Thank you. Likewise, I'm really glad I met you and uh, you're so vibrant and <laughs> fun to talk to and so very interesting. And I hope that we'll uh, meet in person at some point in the future. And uh, I look mm -hmm. forward to, I look forward to, oh, your dog, is that your dog? <laughs> you remember I mentioned yesterday that if you, he were here, you would be hearing him bark. That's him barking. I right. think he's seen a squirrel in our garden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's really reactive to squirrels. Um, so yeah, that's Funny. my dog. Um, yeah, that would be great to meet in person one of these days soon. Um, yes. Sometime if we're flying through New York for some reason, we might our paths might cross there. Yes, that would be great. Um, All right. Yes, well, and I actually. What? 
Oh, sorry. I, I, I was going to say, I, I may be going to London mm -hmm. in the near future. So that might, that could oh, great. work too. But regardless, we'll absolutely. be in touch. <laughs> okay. Yes, absolutely. It would be love. It would be great to show you around London. Have you been here before? Yes, I've been there a few times. My best friend from childhood lives there. So I've visited a few oh, times. Right. right. Well, let us know if you're coming. And yeah, it would be great to meet in person and, and show you a bit of our, our part of London anyway. Yes, that sounds great. Cool. Great. Sounds well, wonderful. Thanks very much for your time. Hi, June. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Okay.